Right now, we're going to welcome back Noe Mahoney. He joined us yesterday. This time, a different conversation talking about two former Celadon executives. What's going on with their settlement? Noe, thanks for joining us again. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, well, former Celadon trucking executives Eric Meek and Bobby Peebler have reached an agreement with the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission in uh, an alleged accounting fraud case related to uh, the Celadon bankruptcy in uh, 2019. Uh, the SEC accused the two men of devising an alleged scheme to hide uh, tens of millions of dollars in losses uh, with the company. You know, when Celadon uh, went bankrupt, uh, it was the largest truckload carry in history to uh, file for bankruptcy. Uh, at the time when it closed, it had about 2,700 trucks um, in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, uh, as well as 4,000 employees, including about uh, 3,000 uh, truck drivers. And Noah, was this really essentially a case of them looking to try to defraud the government? Um, I don't know the specifics. I hadn't read the whole case file, but it is related to um, they were trying to hide. Allegedly, they were trying to hide losses related to, uh, you know, Celadon. And the SEC had accused them of devising this scheme where they were selling trucks at overinflated prices uh, through a joint venture with another company and one of their subsidiaries. It was, uh, it was a little, it was very convoluted, but basically they, the SEC had accused them of trying to hide these losses. That, uh, and the uh, SEC civil case, um, there was another tri criminal case with the Department of Justice that was uh, also recently dismissed back in August, and it was related to these same charges. So both men, uh, the, S the SEC reached a settlement in their civil case with these two men, and the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice, dismissed the criminal charges against these two men back in August. Can you talk a little bit about what the settlement looks like as far as money goes? Are we talking, well, this is a, this is a civil suit, so there's no, no criminal penalties, no criminal jail time involved, but what does the monetary settlement look like now? You know, I was wondering that um, it's not the settlement uh, details of it are not in the um, court filings. So I called the lawyers for both men, uh, the law firms that were representing them, and they declined to comment. And I reached out to the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission yesterday to see if I could find out any more. And they also declined to comment. So it's, it's uh, unclear at this time um, what, the, what the settlement was, if it involved you know, penalties or fines or, or, or anything at all. So it, it's, it's unclear at this point. So with this, Celadon was obviously a case to be made an example of, and now the bankruptcy has gone on for a while, for four years since 2019. We're at this kind of inflection point almost in the freight markets where I think if, if we were to see another large truckload carrier like Celadon potentially go bankrupt, it, a lot of it would have to be due to mismanagement, right? And, and management maybe not aligning with the way that the market is, with their strategic goals. Do you think that the Celadon case has kind of set an example across the industry for these large truckload carriers for what not to do if bankruptcy were to become them? Yeah, you know, the Celadon case is interesting because of this civil, you know, the civil, the civil uh, accusations brought by Securities and Exchange Commission, as well as the criminal, uh, the criminal uh, filings or charges brought against these two men. And it's one of the more unusual cases I've seen uh, about involving a trucking company this large. And, you know, it was this weird perfect storm where these, these criminal and civil trial, these criminal and civil charges came about at almost the exact same time that the company filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. So, uh, I'm not sure we'll ever see a situation like that again. Uh, if it's out, if these, I think, as you mentioned, maybe these trucking companies, uh, and other large companies are sort of put on notice that, you know, the SEC and the Department of Justice does does pay attention to this kind of stuff. And, you know, if, if there are executives out there who are allegedly trying to do stuff, I should say that, you know, both of these men were cleared of all charges. So, but if there are things going on out there that might not be on the up and up, you know, maybe the authorities are paying attention. Anyway, with these two men um, settling now, are there any other outstanding items from Celadon or is this pretty much the end of everything that we're seeing? from that uh from that downfall i believe there is still one more 
ongoing case related to Celadon. Now, it, it doesn't involve um, it involves a, a company that was um, part of this alleged scheme to uh, sell trucks. Uh, I think it was either a, a company in a joint venture with Celadon, or it might have been one of Celadon's uh, subsidiaries. I'd have to look that up. But there is a, a still an ongoing case where I believe a person has pled guilty um, to these charges, but I'll have to double check that. So now with them going forward, the two former executives, do they just have to pay the sum out for their settlement or do they now walk free and they're able to go and do as they please? Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, it's unclear if there was any uh, a monetary fine or penalty. Um, but at this point, you know, the, the Department of Justice has cleared them of all criminal charges uh, with prejudice, which means no charges related to this case can ever be brought to the, brought against them again. So they are free and clear of criminal charges. And with this, you know, SEC settlement, it seems like they're also clear of uh, any, the, the civil case is also done. So these two men are basically, uh, you know, they can walk free without, you know, any, any, um, anything that can be brought back against them. And Noe, of course, we talk about them uh, the Celadon case really kind of being used as an example to be made out of. Um, with them really kind of being able to walk free, does this really kind of potentially open up the door for um, some other potential foul play? Or do you think that these are, this just was just such an extreme and unique case here? Um, you know, I, you can never say never with the, uh, with, with when you have companies this big and this much money, uh, it's hard to say, you know, what, what could happen, but it definitely was a perfect storm. Like I mentioned earlier about, you know, the bankruptcy, the, the chapter 11 bankruptcy and these, these criminal and civil uh, charges. Uh, I would be surprised if it happened in a similar way as Celadon, you know, but you can never say never. It's, it's just, it's such a, sometimes uh, truth is stranger than fiction. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. No, thank you for keeping us updated with this story. Anything else that you're working on for the week right now? Uh, I am working on an update of uh, cargo theft here across the U.S. and California and Texas lead as usual. So I'll be uh, putting out a report on that sometime this week. Awesome. No, we'll, we'll definitely be checking for that story. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.